Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today we are talking. Today is uh, week uh, eight, I guess. And uh, the topic is uh, constraint optimization. Let's lecture on constraint optimization. And here is our quiz. I hope that you see it well. Uh, as in uh, the lecture, we uh, illustrated the uh, motivated optimality condition for inequality constraints graphically and then present at least uh, of uh, Karosh Kuntaker condition. Uh, this is what you ask it, you are asked to do now. You can start working. Okay. So we will, uh, uh, our lecture is dedicated to constraint optimization, but uh, first we will get back briefly to unconstrained, what we learned. We finished a uh, very large part of our course, unconstrained optimization. So it was, uh, one dimensional optimization. And then we learned the multi dimensional steepest descent or gradient descent. Uh, my microphone And then, uh, so we, we told that if uh, the problem is ill posed, then uh, gradient descent starts zigzagging and converges slowly. Then uh, Newton method is uh, much better in terms of number of steps and it achieves quadratic convergence. I mean, it's very fast uh, towards end. And Gauss Newton is special version related to Newton when we have least square problem, not minimization, not usual minimization, but least square. And then we told that conjugate gradient, uh, new, new, Newton has a rather large cost of uh, every step. You need to solve uh, uh, n by n uh, system of linear equation, so, which is uh, n cube divided by six uh, with the Cholesky factorization. And conjugate gradient is better. Uh, it's very good for quadratic functions, but it works also for nonlinear functions. And truncated Newton, when you solve local quadratic model with conjugate gradient. And then quasi Newton is very important. And uh, this lecture was a relatively old. So I didn't include yet, and I should do it now. And, 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 and I said, so quasi Newton B, B, BFGS is very important, but uh, limited memory BFGS for very large problems is uh, one of most popular methods today, and we learned what, what it is. And uh, sequential subspace optimization, it's a rather important method, but uh, I teach it in, in, in the time and we had have lectures who is interested, but it's not included in our course today. Any, any question, any comment about this slide? I just remove uh, LBFGS, remove drawings. And uh, like I told in the lecture, what the, uh, we didn't include in the course, but it's very important when you have a, rel a relatively modest problem with say 10 or several tens of variables or less than 10. The so called Nedler and Mid simplex method, which is able to work without derivative. 
if you if you have no access to derivatives uh, so any 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 comments about this unconstrained part and then we will move further and uh, so maybe move to constraint optimization just any anybody respond as usually with your voice that you hear me we can okay. hear you loud and clear okay good, good. So and uh, constraint optimization is uh, minimize the function under, for example, inequality functional constraints or equality, the other kinds, but we concentrate on those. And uh, this is what you already did in, in, in quiz. We motivate if if I have on this example three constraints here. Uh, G1, G2, and G3, and the lines uh, correspond to the point uh, set of points where constraint is zero. So inside this is feasible area. And for example, we want to minimize an objective function with the level lines drawn here. So we want to find the lowest level line. It still has some common point with the feasible set, and usually it touches feasible set, and that's why when it's uh, one smooth constraint, then we say that just gradient and of uh, constraint and of our objective are collinear. So with some lambda, they maybe some to zero, and uh, if uh, several constraints, then uh, uh, more general Kuntaker conditions. Any any question? Any comment about this? I hope you succeeded to write. It. Yes, yes, right. um, yes. On the fifth uh, lecture, if, uh, if you were here before, you try to explain the right picture. The the left one is more intuitive, but the right one is a bit. Uh, so right, right one is a bit less intuitive yeah um, at least in this two-dimensional example let me think uh, how can i uh, okay maybe i could take my pen make some additional you can you can find some some lambda and all the space right it, it, it spent all the space is uh, I, I, I should say uh, you 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 asked also questions uh, a week ago I think you should do something with your microphone I can't <laughs> no, no it's seriously I hardly hear you uh, so uh, too strong echo I'll try to speak. Uh, uh, for me it's too strong echo, 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 echo. So yes, um, we cannot hear him as well for the for every week. Yes, him alone. Yeah, uh, yes. So, just uh, otherwise we we will mute, mute you unless you will do something with your microphone. Uh, okay, let me try to do some drawing. So it's it's like uh, illustration here, uh, annotate okay hmm. what can I, can i do maybe to take some off uh maybe i will do one more picture here somewhere here so i have one const one constraint and another constraint and uh, i have uh, level line uh, level line which uh, touches uh, in intersection of those constraints and you see uh, i really didn't prove it formally it, it it will be more about this when we show with the penalty function method uh, how lagrange multiplier multipliers are formed and the optimality condition 
here you can only see from the picture uh, so the minus gradient or gradient sorry of of our objective fun function looks this way and uh, if i take imaginary line uh, let me draw one more line actually line tangent line to my uh, level line of my objective function Th this should be one point you can see at least from the plot let me return to the blue color that gradients uh, gradient vectors of uh, constraints are uh, on this half plane ah everything maybe i should do undo undo i should draw from here uh, gradient of uh, gradients of both constraints you see they are on on the same uh, half space we, this we is minus the gradient right ah uh? this is minus the gradient my uh, yes he, he is gradient of uh, the objective and those are minus gradients of constraints yes thank you very much and we, we we see that all those three vectors are on the same half space and this is the reason uh, that uh, uh, if if i have two blue vectors and uh, take the positive linear combination uh, it covers any vector on this on this entire half space yes do you agree with me yes and this is actually the reason why uh, with the non-negative lagrange multipliers <coughs> we can achieve uh, zero condition so minus uh, 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 gradient of uh, objective function minus weighted sum of gradients of constraints are of active constraints are zero i don't know one more hand waving i tried to explain something but we will get uh, back again uh, when we will talk about uh, Lagrange multipliers via penalty function method, and it will be today. <coughs> okay. I have a question. Yes. I'm not sure I understand what is a uh, active uh, constraint and a non-active constraint. Uh, very good. Thank you for this question. Uh, so I, I uh, first of all. I have a solution of my oops, solution of my optimization problem. It's here. Yes. Okay. So the constraints who has um, zero level uh, lines, yes, or zero level sets who pass through the solution point, uh, they are active in the way that if i change them a bit they may move my uh, optimality uh, optimal point and this uh, constraint g3 for example is not active because uh, this blue point is inside of feasible area with respect to g3 <coughs> uh, so we have constraints g less than equal z zero so G3 is smaller than zero in this area and it's not active. And in our combination of uh, gradients, yes, uh, of constraints and objective function, it just doesn't participate. So this constraint is non-active. I mean, we can even write it down. This is non-active.
and those two are active yes this and this are active active okay i hope it's clear yes thank you okay please okay then i think i will clear my drawings if there are no questions so i clear drawings and uh, stop annotation okay and uh, we continue and uh, so we had this uh, sorry it's not uh, Lagrangian is not written on this slide so maybe it's a good uh, thing to write it down and say it again uh, okay. to move a little bit so L of uh, x uh, lambda is the f of x plus some lambda i g i of x uh, okay so and and we and we say that we had this condition gradient uh, f plus some um, of Extra. Okay, let me undo. Let me undo. Uh, of x star plus some uh, lambda i nabla g i of x star is uh, zero. And the uh, immediately i remind you so we, we told that only active constraints uh, should participate in this combination so uh, lambda i is zero for non-active constraints yes immediately we see that this condition should be satisfied yes and uh, like we illustrated and we will get back to it uh, when talking about penalties that for active uh, those coefficients are non-negative and from those conditions i conclude that this sum of lambda i g g i should be also z zero actually every every term in this sum should be zero but uh, if i know that the uh, lambda are uh, non-negative and g uh, non-positive as a solution that enough to say that sum is uh, zero and this is the important uh, complementarity slackness condition which is widely used in mechanics okay any question here okay if no question uh just say with voice that you have no questions because i want to be in control the communication is working no questions. okay thank you thank you very much uh clear and uh, michael michael yes but can you clarify why the lambda is uh, zero? Is is that a definition or is it a formal complementary? Uh, yeah. you, you, you mean this one, yes? Yes, is that a definition or it's is it part of uh, uh, It comes from our uh, hand-waving illustration on previous slide on previous slide again let, let uh, it's it's good that we are going back and forth uh yeah in the quiz <laughs> i assume that that it, it's a uh, so we, we considered the, this point and we told that our gradient of objective function is linear combination with weights non-negative weights of minus gradients of uh, active constraints okay 
Um, okay. Th that's why we don't need th this non-active constraint. Just uh, uh, may change our picture. We don't need it. So we we by force we say that if if we want to put it into sum, then we just uh, say that it's lambda should be zero. Or we should uh, otherwise we could write down sum <coughs> only over uh, active terms. So it's more like a priori condition more than a more uh, rigorous mathematics. No, no, it's, it's rigorous. It's rigorous. Uh, people show mathematically rigorous that when uh, uh, active constraints are linearly independent, then gradient of objective function may be expressed as linear combination of active constraints. Then <coughs> this condition uh, on the next slide. This condition is satisfied. Again, I removed my explicit formula for Lagrangian. This condition is satisfied when uh, lambda for non-active constraint is zero. Okay. Okay. Thank you for the question. You know, this is very new stuff for you and you should go around several times and you will wow, get wow. used to it. It's good. Should Thank you. I should uh, mute somebody. Uh, just a second. Let me mute. Uh... No, no, it's a break, background uh, noise. Ah, it's yeah, all good. It's yours? Yeah, yeah, it's a background ah, okay. noise. So if it's yours, I do not mute. But you mute yourself when you finish. <coughs> okay. Uh... In order to clear, I should get back to annotate and clear. And then we'll move annotation. Okay. And then uh, afterwards, immediately we got to practical. One of, uh, by the way, it's one of most practical ways to solve constraint optimization problem. If we have a uh, in our possession tools for unconstrained optimization, like Newton method or quasi Newton or whatever. <coughs> so if you have a optimization problem, uh, what we do, we define a penalty function of one variable, uh, which is expressed here and some particular cases. And then we just apply this penalty function to every constraint with some phi p of g i of x. So and p pen penalizes the argument to being large positive. So when we minimize this expression, it forces constraints to be not very strongly positive, but also uh, there is a penalty parameter. So uh, phi p, you, you see, uh, for example, here it, it may be expressed in this form. And if we put, uh, if we take it uh, very large penalty parameters, then penalty really becomes uh, close and more and more close to ideal penalty. So it really hardly penalizes any violation of constraint. So we know that with our minimization of penalty aggregate. <coughs> We will not violate constraint, and inside the feasible area, when constraints are satisfied, it's like the penalty itself vanishes, so it doesn't disturb. So, and the, and this give us a, a ideal penalty aggregate, which is written here, which is just our objective in the feasible set. G is feasible set it's described here and the infinity otherwise <coughs> so if we minimize such a function over X of course we get X which belongs to feasible set which has the minimal uh, function value which is actually a goal of our optimization any question here okay and then just tell me no questions, somebody. 
We actually have a little question about uh, this yeah. algorithm. We didn't uh, completely understand uh, what is the motivation. We, we understood everything about the algorithm, all the steps and stuff like that, but we didn't really uh, understand the motivation of starting with lower P and then increase it. So what is the trade-off that uh, we're doing? Uh, this yes. uh, thank you, process? thank you for one more good question. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, the motivation is very simple. Uh, for example, Newton and other methods which we learned, they require smooth, nice uh, objective function. If your function, uh, if your aggregate, uh, if your function includes uh, such co uh, components that it's uh, zero here and jumps to infinity, then uh, any linear or quadratic uh, in uh, approximation, yes. What what do we do with Newton method, for for, for example? We we take a quadratic uh, I don't know extrapolation of our quadratic model of our function and minimize and then move to to the next uh, point. But quadratic model of such function is very non-accurate if you are far from uh, solution. If you are very close to this. Uh, point actually uh, it happens that quadratic model locally is uh, still rather good and that's why uh, uh, those methods work but you you should get close to this point in order to work with strong penalty and here is the recipe start with soft penalty minimize and increase it gradually and minimize again and then with for example newton optimization you you get uh, rather good rather good uh, converging process and the values for the increase of uh, p the alpha value and is that a general value that is recommended or, uh, or is it that uh, we developed it somewhere mathematically is the uh, thumb uh, thumb uh, rule you you start rule of thumb uh, you start with p equal one and then you increase it if you need really very high accuracy it may go to even to million and you go by iterations but uh, it uh, it is a problem related depends on uh, what accuracy and how good the uh, starting point do you have and there are special methods not only starting with uh, moderate p but the special methods which introduce artificial variables <coughs> to get to uh, to good starting point if you don't have a fin, uh, hint from your physical considerations for example you 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 optimize some system but you already know solution which uh, somebody achieved by hand and this is your starting point it may be a rather good starting point more or less and you will do this in your homework so you you will get handled thank you oh, please. Uh, okay let me see where, where we are uh, let's uh, finish with this so and this just uh, repeat we what we already told you start with some x and some mod moderate penalty parameters minimize for example for some number of steps with for example newton quasi newton or whatever and uh, gradually increase your penalty parameter and even recommend this ah ah alpha ah, alpha you you may increase uh, every this is called external iteration when you update penalty parameter and in internal in, in, iteration you you may have uh, many Newton steps, for, for, ex for example, in many optimizations. So every external iteration, you may increase your penalty parameter to two times or ten times. And this is more or less general recipe, uh, hand waving general recipe. There are much more rigorous policies in convex optimization for convex problems, uh, but it's a more advanced topic. We don't touch it uh, much in our course. 
Okay, and uh, okay, and uh, it's a good point to do break for ten minutes, and then five thirty. We I waiting your break, and I stop recording. And please uh, remind me to resume recording. And uh, okay, microphone more close now. Okay, so we were with the penalty or inequality constraint. And then we get to very interesting chapter. So with the analysis of unconstrained optimization with the penalty method, we are able to get uh, to notion of Lagrange multiplier. And uh, understand them more. You, we, we, we have this in the lecture, but I prepared more clear slides. So let's go through, through it. So uh, again, we uh, we are talking about the uh, problem with uh, inequality constraints, which is written here. Uh, and like we already told, the uh, Lagrangian is the objective function plus some. Uh, of uh, multipliers multiplied by constraints. And the uh, Harosh Kuntaker condition says that in the if uh, uh, in optimal points, uh, gradients of constraints are linearly independent, <coughs> then necessary optimality condition is that. Uh, gradient of Lag Lagrangian should be zero and uh, also we'll see later something with the non-active constraints will, should happen okay uh, where do we continue uh, we built the penalty aggregate like I uh, like we told her already to solve our problem so we have this uh, one dimensional penalty function and apply it to every constraint and sum up. And when we minimize, when we do intermediate minimization with some given penalty parameter, uh, which is written here, uh, XP is minimizer of FP of X. In this point, Usual gradient of FP as a function of variable vector variable X should be zero. It's a condition for unconstrained minimum, which we expand here. <coughs> and now we pay attention then that this expression and the expression for optimality zero of Lagrangian are rather similar to each other. Also, gradient of objective is here. Also, gradients of constraints with uh, what is phi prime? Phi is a scalar function. So, phi prime is a number with some numbers. And let's uh, move further. We, we even may denote this number as, say, Lambda i with index uh, with uh, sine p uh, superscript p uh, says that maybe maybe this is uh, some approximation of our optimal Lagrange multiplier, which are written here. Ah, by the way, here should be lambda star. Yes, let's put it uh, immediately. Annotate here should be lambda star. Okay. Uh, and uh, what happens as the penalty parameter goes to infinity? We say that our penalty ag aggregate become more and more close to ideal, so called ideal penalty aggregate. And our solution of unconstrained problem become more and more close to solution of entire pro, uh, pro problem. 
So what we have, what we have, the, this uh, argument is mo uh, moving towards X star, towards this argument. Yes, I mean this term and this term become more and more close to each other. The gradients of constraints as well, because the argument is moving, xp becoming more and more close to x star. So, and they are linearly independent. And then, uh, by some explanation in the lecture, we say that if matrix of uh, which has those gradients in the column is non degenerate, then uh, if, if you have situation when we have uh, uh, lambda is actually a solution of system of uh, linear e equations which is defined by those uh, components and uh, lambda p is the solution of another system of equ equations but matrix which is here uh, moves towards this ma matrix and the right hand side moves to, towards this uh, right hand side. In this situation, also sol solution lambda IP converges uh, towards uh, lambda I star. <coughs> and uh, more than that, uh, what is the uh, lambda IP? This is derivative of our penalty function and pay attention that penalty function is a monotonically increasing function. <coughs> so its derivative is uh, non-negative. So this is one more way to get to the result that optimal multipliers for active constraints are non-negative. Uh, actually, I jumped here to the last row, yes? And what will uh, happen with non-active constraints, with non-active constraints, uh, G, GI, I, I will can even put some point here. For example, for non-active constraints in sol solution, G, GI is not zero. It's some ne negative number. It's inside of feasible set, yes? We have constraints G, GI less equal zero. So for non-active constraints, it's strongly less than zero. So it's uh, just some value. It converges to some value. But uh, penalty function become more and more flat as the penalty parameter increases. So that's why uh, derivative of this penalty function goes to zero. And uh, so corresponding Lagrange multiplier for non-active constraints also converges to zero. Any question here? If no question, just let me know that you hear my voice. I'm yes, sure. we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Maybe you should meditate one minute with this slide it's very important for understanding and if you are able to ask question it may be useful for other students even uh, I, I would say foolish questions i allow to ask any questions in my lesson it's good it's good just to initiate some conversation okay if no question, there are clear drawings and uh, stop annotating. And what else do, do we have? Let me skip this. And uh, uh, we also had the uh, two small sections. In the second lecture, uh, what will happen if we have penalty uh, e equality constraint? So, for example, this optimization problem minimize f of x subject to h j of x equals zero. So, we want to pe 
penalize both uh, positive and negative values. And for example, uh, quadratic penalty is uh, rather good for this pur purposes. And uh, when we want penalty to become stronger and stronger, we may just multiply it by some large number. And all other ideas are the same. The, or the only thing, as we told the, in the previous slides, that our Lagrange multipliers are derivatives of the penalty function in the limit. And these penalty functions for equality constraints, it may have a negative and positive derivatives. So when we have equality constraints, we have no restriction on, si on sign of uh, Lagrange multiplier. Okay, maybe it's written here. Yes. So it's uh, written here. So it's just uh, again, like in previous case, gradient of Lagrangian should be zero. But here, all constraints are active, yes? So we can not say about any lambda that it should be zero. And also, we don't put any restriction on sign of lambda. And this you should remember, because there are sometimes questions in exam with the write down Lagrangian or show solution KKT conditions for problems with equality constraints and and sometimes quite often people may have a problem which is a mixture of constraints there are some equality and some inequality constraints so in this case you have two groups of multipliers and those who relate which relate to Equality constraints can have any sign, positive or negative, and those uh, who relate to inequality constraints should be non-negative and zero for non-active constraints. Uh, any questions here? Okay. So if no questions, then we move uh, to last very short part. Uh, barrier method, which also discussed briefly in the lecture. So, what uh, di uh, difference? So, uh, again, uh, our fe feasible area is that constraints should be non, -po non positive. Penalty function uh, penalizes it in the way that it may become positive in the process of solution, but when we increase penalty parameter is the violation of uh, negativity is uh, smaller and smaller but with barrier method uh, it approaches this co uh, corner approaches this ideal penalty from inside from the left and then at every unconstrained optimization we are guaranteed that we are that we satisfy all uh, inequality constraints by the way the uh, special condition that uh, feasibility set should have internal points that there should be a point where all uh, inequality constraints are strictly feasible uh, strictly less than, than zero then uh, barrier method may really work Okay, any question here? Yes, yes. Uh, why, why there is no PT inside the phi function? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for the, the question. We, we could uh, put it here. Just let me annotate. We could, uh, you, you mean about here, yes? We could yes, put exactly. it here, but we don't have. And I will explain you why. If if I have some barrier, which is which goes to infinity, when uh, t approaches zero, if I if I 
what will happen if I multiply this barrier by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0,0001 by a very small number? Uh, even in my plot, you 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 can see that value value of barrier function will become close to zero everywhere, where it's positive and where it's negative, except of very uh, very uh, close neighborhood of the origin, and this is exactly what we want for for the ideal barrier function. So okay. it, it works without. And uh, just a second. And one more comment: if your uh, if your function is uh, logarithm, then uh, you can also take constant out, uh, out of lo logarithm. Yes. Logarithm of product, yes, is the sum of uh, lo logarithms, and this term will give you just a constant. But constant doesn't influence our optimization. So we uh, okay. can always uh, remove uh, the question about that. Uh, just a second, just a second, just a second. Uh, okay, yes, I'm with you. But uh, the cutting, the, the, the test where, by the way, do you hear me better now with this uh, idea? Do you have that? I've changed the headset. Do you hear me uh, better? Can any volunteer repeat the question for everybody? Those who, who here well. Do you hear me better? <laughs> I, I I want one more person. Are you, are you... Yes, we can hear better now. We can uh, please hear. Uh, repeat question for everybody. Uh, okay, okay. Or or tell let me, me let me please let me please ask the question. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes the please. question is the question is uh, the minus log minus p. Um, I don't understand the cut the, the place where you cut the, the axis, the t axis, is only when the t is uh, minus one. No, uh, you say it's here, yes, yes, it wouldn't, it wouldn't get closer to the, to the y, but uh, okay, you're, you're right, you, you cross the axis. Here, but uh, why does it matter? So then, I have a I have a penalty parameter. By the way, pay attention. Ah, it's one over p. So when one over p becomes small, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm drawing with mouse, but not with pen. Maybe I should take pen. Just a second. Uh, let's see what you're saying. You're saying uh, it will be I, I, I want to do just a second. Let, let me do. I think I understand now. You're uh, but it, uh, it I want to be... do drawing for everybody. So uh, this will be a function which passes, and you're right through the same point. Yes. Yes. It's very flat, and this goes to to infinity. So uh, mm -hmm. I I I can be here. Yes. In this area, I can easily be where, where it's positive, but it's rather small. I mean, it would be the ideal function, but uh, on on uh, the section which is uh, between minus one and zero, it will be above the the axis. The theory. Yes, but still, it will be very close to to zero. It doesn't matter for yes. us whether it's below mm. or above z z zero. It's important that it's derivative, very very small. It's it's very very flat, and it doesn't mm -hmm. uh, matter. It's a little below and a little above zero. But thank you very much for your question because Thanks. you pay attention on some details, and then our visual brain have more food to understand, to to get more close to un understanding this situation thank you thank you Michel. Oh, pleasure okay uh, can i remove this drawing okay i remove it uh, oh. it's interesting we went uh, much faster than previous years so uh, then uh, 
as usually uh, I say that we finish our official part and I will pause the recording now <coughs> and now if you want to stay for free discussion mathematical discussion and then we will have a reception hour with any questions you have regarding homeworks so or personal question or anything so I will pause recording now <coughs>